Relativity is all about reference frames. So that's why I put this one here. You're the world's greatest dad, although my frame of reference is pretty limited. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk first about reference frames and Galilean transformations. I'll explain what those are as well. So let's start by just talking about a reference frame. Because relativity, it's all about who's measuring what. And the reason it's called relativity is because it's everything's relative to someone else. So for example, uh, who is measuring what compared to whom? I suppose it should be whom. So for example, we might have this reference frame right here that observer is not moving, and we typically call this reference frame S, like a regular reference frame. Whereas if you're on a train, for example, so let's just say like this is an, a common um, explanation given. It's just because us humans can understand a little bit better. You could be in a spaceship or whatever, but we tend to call S primed. That's the reference frame where like if you're sitting inside this train, you know, things might seem normal inside there, but then this person watching you, then all sorts of crazy things happen. So S primed is going to be the reference frame of a train, for example, that's moving with respect to the observer. And we're going to say it's at a constant speed, doesn't accelerate. So now what's the definition of an inertial frame? This is going to be so important. I'm going to put big, big uh, circle thingy around it. So an inertial frame is a reference frame that's not accelerating. If it's not accelerating, that means it might have two things, right? Either it's not moving at all, or it's moving at a constant speed. And we're going to assume that Newton's laws are the same in all inertial reference frames. In other words, we call this Galilean relativity. How does that differ from uh, special relativity, which we're going to be learning about later? Special relativity has to do with things going near the speed of light. So we, we call those things relativistic speeds, basically where these weird effects of relativity have to be taken into account. Here, though, no. Galilean relativity, it's like just regular things, just different people are seeing different things. So let's talk about Galilean transformations. I put this meme with Galileo because, you know, staring at the sun before it was cool. That's because he's got his telescope. So let's do this. For the, uh, for the Galilean transformations, there's a couple of equations here that we need to know from our data booklet. So one of them is, now again, just to remind you, if a reference frame S is stationary, and we have S primed, which is moving with respect to S. This is like your train that's moving. All right, well, then one of the equations goes like this. It goes X primed equals X minus VT. Okay, so what are the different uh, variables? First of all, we have x, which is your position in your stationary frame. So that means if you're sitting you know, as an observer here, that's the position of something. Whereas a position in a moving frame, that's going to be called x primed. Primed, again, anything to do in the moving frame of reference. And then speed of the moving frame with respect to the stationary frame, we're going to call that v, and then t is going to be the time. So just try to remember that primes have to do with the moving reference frame, and that's going to be uh, pretty helpful. So what if now we have an object, so this is your sort of position one, but you got a speed one as well. So let's say we have an object that's moving inside a frame. So this gets a bit complicated, but let's say you're standing there, you're an observer in frame S, so you're staying still. And you're watching, let's say, a train go by. Again, yeah, we, we love to use trains as our examples. So uh, I don't know why. <laughs> it depends how many people ride trains, but there we go. At least in Denmark, we certainly do. Um, S primed is going to be the frame of reference of someone sitting inside that train. And inside that train, keep in mind, that person you know, rolls a ball. And so they're going to measure that speed here. We're going to call that U primed. Primed because it's in the reference frame of the moving train. And we're going to say that V is actually the speed of the train compared to this S person. And so we're going to have these different variables now too. So we're going to have this one right here, and it's going to go U primed equals just U minus V. And then this one also in your data booklet. And let's define our variables. So we have U, which is the speed of the object measured in the stationary frame. So that means, you know, this is how fast I'm going to think this ball goes. So if I'm sitting there watching this ball, that's how fast I'm going to see that ball moving. And then we have the speed of the object measured in the moving frame. So that means that, you know, if you're in the moving frame here, that's going to be U primed. So that's that's if you're in the train measuring the speed of the ball, that's what you'll measure. And of course, V is the speed of the moving frame. So that V is the same here, moving frame speed. Here's the moving frame speed as well. So since everything's all about trains, I thought I would uh, do a little special treat for you and uh, show you a video from 
Well, if you know my humor now, you know I really love dumb puns and dumb jokes. This might be the best movie ever made, in my mind at least. It's a movie called Top Secret. It's made in the 80s, I think. Uh, it stars Val Kilmer, actually. Uh, it takes place in World War II. I just want to show you this one scene right here. So Val Kilmer is sitting in his train. All right, here we go. And his train's going to start going, right? Let's watch. <laughs> I love how the guy runs after it. <laughs> okay, so what does that help us with? Well, that just tells you that everything is relative, right? They're playing with the idea that you thought he was moving. It's absolutely relevant to all this stuff here. So there we go. So then let's do an example with a train. I like that all aboard the fail road. <laughs> okay, so we have a train. It moves to the right at a speed of 4 meters per second. So this train is moving to the right. That's 4 meters per second as measured by an observer on the ground. Okay, so this, I'm sitting here on the ground. I'm watching this train go by. And inside the train, uh, someone rolls a ball to the right with a speed of 11 meters per second. So what variable is that? If this is inside the train and this is 11 meters per second as measured by someone in the train, then this must be you primed. And the question is, how fast is the ball rolling as measured by the observer on the ground? In other words, this person right here, how fast am I going to see the ball going? So I'm wanting to measure you. That's what I want. I want to find this. I want you. Did I want you? Ha <laughs> ha. All right, so if I look at this equation right here, I have u primed equals u minus v. And it's just that easy. I can just put this all in. So let's see. What's uh, u primed is going to be, um, actually, I'll just write them all down here. So u primed, what's u primed? That is 11 meters per second. Okay. I've got, um, what else? I've got u, which is what I want, and I've got v which is four meters per second. And they're both in the same direction. And so if I just brute force use this equation, then I can just say, ah, that means 11 equals u minus four. Therefore, to get u by itself, I just take the minus four, put it over there, and I get 11 plus four, which is 15. So that means I'm going to say that the speed is gonna be 15 meters per second. And keep in mind to the right. It all depends on if I want a vector or not. They weren't really very clear. This is probably enough to just say this right here because it's a speed, not a v uh, velocity, or else we want it to the right. Now, I use the equation to do this. You could have actually just used some logic. If you think about this, I'm standing here, and I'm watching a train move to the right by 4 meters per second, and inside the train, the thing is moving 11. Well, 11 plus 4 then should be 15. This stuff might actually be reasonable, and I hope you find that. But just so you know, at least that's how we can apply this equation. But the key trick to relativity is knowing which variable is which. Once you know that, you're fine. And remember, prime means you know measured in the re uh, reference frame that's moving.